So there are a lot of different ways to make a color palette, and we're going to go over a few of them in Photoshop. Way number one, you can lift the colors from an image using the eyedropper tool. So if we grab the eyedropper tool and click on a color, we can then add it to our swatches panel. This is the little panel that popped up. We could name it if we wanted to. And it's added right here. And if we um, if we wanted to, we could add a little a little group for this color palette, right? Um, and we could add the um, add the colors in there. What's great about this is that it'll be like an already balanced um, image, so you're kind of already adapting colors that like fit nicely together for whatever reason. Um, put some darks in there, right? And so we could get up to eight colors this way. The second way of creating a color palette involves understanding complementary, analogous, triadic, all of these different color relationships and being able to apply them to a color wheel, right? So if we make a new layer and we draw really quickly on this layer a triangle, if we pick three colors from the points of this triangle, and I'll make a new group for them to be in. Spelled that palette wrong, classically. Um, we grab three colors, then these three colors will have a triadic relationship, and you don't have to limit yourself to just the exact points of the triangle. We could come in and choose from kind of like the center of the palette um, or whatever and we could add colors that were just like off to the left and right of some of these colors, um, which just expands kind of that triadic relationship. Uh, right, and we could spin this if we wanted to see some other color relationships and pick out um, colors from, you know, new sections of this, or we could draw a different shape um, we could draw a split complementary or a rectangle or a square, and all of these are um, can be exciting color palettes, um, right? Or we could choose analogous colors that are all um, kind of right next to each other on the color palettes. Um, any any kind of um, of palette made in this way is normally pretty thoughtful um, and the colors you know it this might be a straightforward way for some of you to find uh, some awesome color palettes. The third and final way I wanted to talk about for making a color palette and you know there are obviously way more ways than these three that you can develop your own um, but there's this website called Coolers, um, C-O-O-L-O-R-S, um, where uh, it allows you to kind of make a color palette um, using its color palette generator. And we're also going to use this to talk about um, hexadecimal codes. These codes that it gives you are um, the standard codes that uh, computers use to render colors, essentially. So if you put this in one computer, it's always going to be that color in another computer. Um, so we're going to learn how to put those into Photoshop. Um, but first, I'm going to hit um, spacebar, which I think is supposed to create, yes, it's supposed to generate new colors. Um, and then once we get to a color that we like, um, we can click on it, and it should save the color. We'll lock it, and then we can keep hitting um, spacebar, and these colors should complement the color that you've chosen. 
Um, yeah, and you can save colors um, to your favorites and stuff and copy the hex from here. So we'll also lock this one. Um, so this is a really fun way if you're having trouble figuring out a color palette um, to, oh, this is a very exciting palette. All right, I really like this um, where it landed here. So we are going to bring these into Photoshop. Remember I mentioned um, we can copy the hexadecimal code on here. Um, you can also drag the order of the colors around, um, but we are going to copy this hexadecimal code and go back to Photoshop. And then we can do this in a number of places, but if we double click on our swatches over here on our, um, these are, this is the foreground color and the background color, um, in your tool panel, we can double click on that. And down at the bottom, you can paste that hexadecimal code we just copied and see there's that like mauvey pink. And there we have it in our um, in our foreground color so we can add that to our swatches. And I already made palette three. Um, so we would just have to keep doing that. Copying, so it's just copying these six numbers, right? Hex for six, decimal just means it's numbers or whatever. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, you guys couldn't see this last time. That's annoying. Um, but here it is now. This is where we are putting the hexadecimal number right here in this bottom part. I'm so sorry I, I messed up and this was on my other um, computer panel for a second. Um, so we put the hexadecimal code right there and it brings in our mauvey pink, or sorry, our um, orange in this case, and we can add it to the swatch. So we copy, double click, change this number to the new number, and add it to the swatches panel. And remember, any of these palettes could be exported and brought into Illustrator. Um, or there's one last thing that I would like to point out after I bring in this um, blue is that. Um, we can also move um, move colors in between Photoshop and Illustrator using something called the um, Adobe Library. So if we go to if we don't have it out, then we can go to Window and choose Libraries. And the Adobe Library. Oh, here it is. Um, mine doesn't seem to be working today. I think my Photoshop needs an update. It's glitching, but it should have your um, palettes automatically stored in there. Another thing that I would have shown you if my Photoshop wasn't glitching for whatever reason is that if you go to Window, Extensions, and then Adobe Color Themes, but see it's glitching, it will walk you through the kind of um, uh, color relationships. It has like a system that will help you figure out color relationships. So I highly recommend checking out Adobe libraries, you can you can move stuff back and forth between Photoshop and Illustrator. Everything you put into the libraries will be available in both places. And then Adobe color theories, if you have access to these. Some Adobe accounts um, might not, depending on where you have subscribed, right? Um, yeah, so check those two things out. All right, thank you for um, listening to this, uh, and I hope that these maybe helped inspire you to make some more exciting and interesting color palettes. Bye!